Our inexpensive red dot site's worth it and which one is the best? Hi, I'm Tina from Target Tamers and today I'm going to take you through a comparison analysis of the top budget red dot sites to answer these questions and more. But first, let me lay down the groundwork. Since budget can mean different things to everyone, we set the limit to $150 and to help make this roundup as relatable as possible, we handpicked only a few but the most popular and well-recognized budget sites in this price range. So we bought them and we field tested every Every single one of them. So I've literally spent all year testing them to see if waterproof claims are true, if budget optics really can be daylight bright, which ones track true and which ones have mushy turrets. I'll also compare battery run times, the mounts that are included with them and any specialty features like night vision compatibility and motion activation. So the seven that we picked were the CV Life 1x22x33, the Vortex Crossfire CFRD2 model, the Sig Sauer Romeo 5, the Sig Sauer Romeo MSR, the Stinger Axiom 2, the Holosun HS403B, and the Bushnell Trophy TRS25. With that out of the way, let the comparisons begin. So the first comparison is cost. And the cheapest red dot site in this lineup is the CV Life 1x22x33. I got it for around $30 online. Now there are tons of similar alternatives just like this in the market with a different label on it. So it's safe to assume that they will perform uh, really similarly. Now it's a decent range and plinking site, but when you hear people say spend a little bit more to get something better, this couldn't be more true when you're talking about $30 versus $100. And that brings us into the TRS-25 and the six hour MSR price range for under $100. Now out of the two, the MSR is my pick and that's because it has a better turret quality than the Bushnell TRS-25. And so overall you have better build integrity. You've also got the extras like see-through flip-up caps, night vision compatibility, and its performance is reliable and repeatable. So excellent value for the money. Build quality, now all these red dot sites except for the CV Life one, claim to be waterproof, fog proof, having been nitrogen purged and have an IPX7 rating or better. Now most held up well to submersion or exposure to a lot of water, one did not and one I didn't dare try it with. Starting with the Bushnell TRS-25, it claims to be waterproof and fog proof. Unfortunately, in my latest round of testing it, water did get inside the tube and I have been dealing with internal condensation, so fogging on the inside, which is a deal breaker for me. Now it might be water resistant at best with the turret caps left on, but is it waterproof? In my opinion, it is not. Now the CV Life claims nothing about its build integrity. It does have a metal mount and a metal frame, but its weak point is the plastic LED emitter housing and the small thin strip of glue to the window that houses it. I'm positive water will get in there if it's submerged or exposed to a heavy downpour and there goes your electronics. Now all the rest were submerged or exposed to a ton of water, held up well with illumination on. So the CB Life and the TRS-25 are eliminated going forward into the build quality comparison. Now all of them have a anodized matte finish, all except for the Holosun HS403B which has an MAO, micro arc oxidation finish. I'm not a torture tester of optics, so I'm not going to shoot them up with a shotgun or throw them into a lake. But that doesn't mean that I'm gentle with them either. They're always exposed to dirt, dust, rain, snow, consistent thrashing around in my truck, and a lot of drop testing from three to four feet, some of which I will admit are completely accidental. And I'm really good at touching the glass lenses, though that is not a good thing. So the ones that held up the best to having, in terms of having the least amount of surface damage would be the Stinger Axiom 2, the Holosun HS403B, and both of the Six Hour sites. The Vortex Crossfire right off the bat was the one that got a lot of surface nicks and scratches. You can always use silicone cleaning cloths to buff out those scratches if you want, but to slim the margins, it is eliminated going forward. Now out of the remaining four, I'm gonna pick one that has sort of an uh, inherent advantage in protecting the glass both while it's in use and when in storage, and that would be the Six Hour MSR. It comes with see-through flip-up caps in the box with it. And so you can keep these on, protecting the glass when you're shooting with it and when it's in storage. Unlike the others, they do come with caps, but they're the rubber bikini style ones that you have to remove to expose the glass when you're using it. And then of course they go back on in storage. So underdog here, the Romeo MSR takes the cake in build quality. 
dot illumination and visibility. Let's start with daylight conditions. Now there's a lot of confusion about what daylight bright means and that's because there is no clear cut definition and that term is used really loosely in this industry. I take it to mean that the dot is visible on white bright surfaces and just as fast to use in bright and sunny conditions with two eyes open. Now all of these red dot sites are at least daylight visible meaning that you can see the dot on some bright and white surfaces just maybe a little, might be a little bit slower to find that dot. Others you might have to close one eye with in order to concentrate on finding that dot and then keeping it in your sights. So from the very start, the CV life is eliminated just because its illumination is not nearly as comparably bright as the alternatives in this roundup. And the dot reticle is even dimmer. So it's the slowest dot to find out of all seven and is eliminated going forward. Now, the ones that actually did it best were the Holosun HS403B and the two Sig Sauer sites. Low light conditions. For dot performance in low light conditions, what you're looking for is dim enough illumination so that that dot doesn't start burst or bloom. It's already hard enough to look through a red dot site when you're losing light outside and with it resolution and clarity. The last thing you need is too bright illumination washing out your field of view. So the standout sites that did it the best were the Holosun, both Sig sites, the Stinger Axiom 2 and the Vortex Crossfire. Now the CV Life and the Bushnell TRS 25, although adequate, I could barely make out bunnies 25 to 75 yards and compared to the rest, the, bright, the illumination was too bright. Red dot glare. The kind of glare I'm talking about is the reflections that you're seeing around the edges of the field of view or it takes up a good chunk of the field of view. Now other than defective sites, most of this glare is to be expected. It's worse when the illumination is up too high, with there's a source of light coming in from behind you and if you're just holding it and looking through it, so in the handheld position. Now all of the red dot sites passed my requirements that I had, meaning that yes, I saw some glare from all of them. But by addressing either the illumination intensity, the conditions behind me, and testing out its handheld versus mounting positions, all the glare was either eliminated and that which did not completely go away was non-distracting. Astigmatism. So astigmatism being near or far sighted, these are refractive error conditions. And it just means that you might see the dot differently than others do. You might see it as a smear, a smudge, double dots, a cluster of dots, you see it differently. Now the first thing people like to tell online is, oh you must have astigmatism. Well there's a lot of evidence for that. I found that there's very little research on if you're only near or far sighted. But from my own personal experience and from doing a lot of anecdotal research, it, in general, it seems to me that having any one of the refractive error conditions can make you see that dot differently. So I have a diagnosed refractive error condition and I don't need my glasses with all of them. But how I see the dot through a red dot site might be very different to how you see a dot through a red dot site. So with that said, I can only say that you'll only really know what it will look like to you once you get behind it. Even with all that said, I have some recommendations based on me not needing my glasses and that would be the CV Life, really surprising, right? But really good for me and I didn't have to wear my glasses. The Vortex Crossfire, the Stinger Axiom 2, and the Sig Sauer MSR. So my cheapest out of all of them for the most budget bottom bottom barrel dollar price would be the CV Life and the one with the most crisp around dot would be the Stinger Axiom 2. Turret quality. Getting right into it, I've noticed that red dot sites under $100 tend to have significantly poorer turret quality versus those over $100. Now the CV Life has the absolute worst turrets that I've ever dealt with. I did manage to zero with it though. Now the Bushnell TRS-25 has slightly better turrets, one of them is way too easy to overshoot with, but I did get group good groups. Now the exception for the under $100 rule would be the 6 hour MSR, just great, tactile, audible, tracked true, great value for the money. Now all the rest were excellent in terms of everything turret wise, although some of them were just a little bit too eager to be adjusted. Now the one that did it best in my opinion out of all of them was the Vortex Crossfire and that is because of its excellent resistance. Every adjustment that I made was intentional and purposeful. It was not easy to overshoot as I did not do that once with it. It has one MOA values, caps that serve as the adjustment tool. 
Now close on its heels in terms of excellence was the Hollow Sun and the Romeo 5. Very audible, I could hear over ear protection. The feel is great. They have half MOA adjustment values. They have caps that serve as the adjustment tool and they also come with multi-tools um, that will make the adjustments for you as well. I'm taking a quick second to remind you guys that if you're finding this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up by liking this video and show your support by subscribing to our channel. Thank you to our existing subscribers. You're awesome. Battery life. These days, it's not uncommon to find that Red Dot sites have extremely long lasting battery run times. 50,000 hours seems to be the industry best and that's like five years of operation. Granted, these run times are based off of medium illumination, so medium setting, and at least half of these sites need to be ran at max power in order to be visible under daylight conditions. So it's a numbers game now. Which ones have the longest lasting battery run times? And that would be the Holosun, the Stinger Axiom 2, and the Crossfire. They have 50,000 hours off a single SIA 2032 battery. My favorite out of all of them would be the Stinger Axiom 2 for lots of reasons, but not limited to the fact that it is the cheapest one out of the Vortex and the Hollow Sun. Mounts. All of the budget red dot sites in this comparison guide come with some type of mount, though most of them will come with a low profile mount included in the box. None of them failed me during field testing, but this is largely going to be a matter of personal preference as are you going to run it with sites? What is it going on? Are you going to be switching out sites often? Or is that one red dot site dedicated to that one rifle? Those kinds of things will matter. So I'll start with my personal favorite mount and that is the quick detach mount on the Stinger Axiom 2. It's invaluable for my needs as I am constantly switching out optics on my rifles. But if you're going to be running with sites and you want an absolute co-witness, your options would be the both the six hour sites, the Romeo 5 and the MSR. If you're looking for a lower third co-witness, you're looking to the Hollow Sun, the Crossfire, and the Quick Detach with the Stinger Axiom 2. Now the CB Life and the Bushnell TRS-25 have integrated mounts, which means they do not come off, or at least you shouldn't take them off. If you wanna run the Bushnell with sites, you'll have to purchase a riser separately. Specialty features. So most affordable red dot sites won't have any specialty features. What we call the extra bells and whistles, the fancy trappings, but some that fit the budget do. And that would be night vision compatibility and motion activation. So let's start with motion activation. Out of the seven red dot sites, only two have this technology and that would be the Holosun and the six hour Romeo 5. Holosun calls it shake awake, SIG calls it MOTAC. And as you can guess, they're on the more expensive end of this price range. Now, the whole idea behind motion sensor tech is to conserve battery lifetime uh, when it's not in use, but be instantly ready when you go to reach for that rifle. Another pro for it is that you can manually power down and power up the red dot sights, but it just eliminates those steps in engagements when you don't have the time or the conditions prevent you from quickly hitting those knobs or buttons. However, there is a good argument for continuous on red dot sites. Those with 50,000 hour battery run times are a great and competitive alternative in the same engagements when motion sensor activation would be, would be desired. Helpful comparison questions to ask yourself would be how much battery runtime does the red dot site have? Is the motion activation programmable? So can the sleep timer be adjusted to fit your needs and the application? And what is it going on? The red dot site going on the duty weapon inside a patrol car where it's subjected to constant movement could be very different to the red dot site that's going on the home defense AR where it's not being subjected to daily bumps and nudges. If there's a cheap red dot site that does it best, it would be the Holosun HS403B with the Shake Awake. Now the MOTAC in the Romeo 5 is super sensitive and I don't see any way that you're not going to be able to activate that dot short of a bad battery or a defective unit. But the Shake Awake in the Holosun is programmable between 0 to 12 hours, so just that little bit of extra versatility puts it on top. Night vision compatibility. A red dot sight with this capability means that it does not have night, night vision in and of itself. It just means that it has illumination dim enough to be safely used with night vision devices. Now, out of all seven, only the CV Life 
and the Bushnell TRS-25 do not have night, night vision compatibility. And that does not mean a thing to the person who doesn't have it nor intend to use it. But to those of you who do, it's extremely important to pay attention to night vision compatible red dot sights as a too bright illumination can ruin your NVD and that would be an expensive mistake to make. So to slim the margins, I would pick the red dot sights that have the absolute most dimmest illumination night vision settings, which means that I cannot see it in the dark it can only be used with an NVD. And that would be the Holosun, both six tower sites and the Vortex Crossfire. So if you're loyal to one of those brands, there you have it. If you want the one with the maximum features, it's the Holosun, the one for the cheapest price, it's the MSR. Applications, so red dot features and performance will always lend it better to one application versus another, but personal preference and your, your experience will always be the finalizing decision and which is best for you. So the following recommendations are just that, recommendations and suggestions. For beginners, Budget is always going to be a concern, but I think that quality should always be the priority as you're expected to grow and learn with this red dot site. It's assumed that you will upgrade at a later date and then get the features that will accommodate your growing needs. So while at the beginning you won't need those specialty features, you will need quality right off the bat. And my my recommendation is the Stinger Axiom 2 with the Vortex Crossfire and the 6 hour MSR as close as seconds. For hunters, for shotguns, the Bushnell TRS-25 has been a long time winner and the integrated mount does the job. But if you want something with better quality, I would consider the SIG MSR. It's a fantastic budget option, especially if you fork out the cash for the magnifier bundle. For home defense and the like, professional applications, many like to have motion activation on their rifles reserved for these applications. So with that in mind, my recommendation is the Holosun HS403B on the duty weapon inside the patrol car. The programmable shake awake uh, will keep the dot awake during the entire shift, but then will automatically power down when you're off duty. And I think the Motec and the SIG Romeo 5 is ideal for the home defense AR where it's not being bumped and nudged on a daily basis. Now, for those of you who aren't, in, aren't into the motion activation, then consider a continuous on red dot sight with a 50,000 hour battery life, and that would be the Vortex Crossfire and the Stinger Axiom 2. To wrap up this comparison analysis of the top budget red dot sites, I will reveal my personal favorite and why. And this is really hard for me because I'm obsessed with optics and I love them all for different reasons. But if I must pick one, it would be the Stinger Axiom 2. I love the quick detach mount. It's invaluable to me and it has a round red crisp dot that I can see without needing my glasses. And that is why it's my favorite. So this is the complete comparison summary of all the sites under $150 that we chose. We did a complete full field test and review for each of them. Be sure to check them out. All seven of the links will be in the description below. Thanks so much for sticking it out with me today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and get outside.